Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a Fiverr scam alert to notify you about today. Today is December 17th, 2023. Let's get right into this so you do not end up being scammed at Fiverr.com. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get back into the action here and let us show you how we were able to set this individual up. We first needed bait. So the bait was information that can be normally just obtained on the internet. We compiled it together to give the impression that the information had some importance to it. We then went on the internet. We found Sean Dwelt who recommended Abdul Ali M. Abdul Ali M is a pro freelancer. So this is not someone at the bottom of the list. This person has five stars. They're referred to as a pro freelancer. And also, this individual is recommended by a millionaire. How can you go wrong? You will even find him advertised on the front page of Fiverr. So now, I must be safe, right? No. Let us show you some emails that we started to communicate with this individual and how we were able to discover this is a scammer. And the problem is there's nothing you can do about it in, fi in Fiverr.com. There's nothing you can do about it. Let's go ahead and show you some of the emails here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you go to Fiverr.com, this is what you can find. You can find this individual here, Abdul Aliyam, advertising on Fiverr.com. So it gives you the impression I must be safe because he's on Fiverr.com. They advertise him. He's advertising. And also he's recommended by a millionaire, someone who's made millions off of KDP books. The only problem is we found this individual to be very disturbing from a security perspective. Someone else may say, hey, his behavior is all right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the email conversation that we started to have with Abdul Aliyam. To give you the impression that everything is safe, this is something that Fiverr says, we have your back. All right, you have my back? Well, then how are you able to protect me is a good question. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to fishing. So what we did was we started fishing by sending Abdul Aliyam this message. My name is Anthony Show as I create an easy reference guidebook for seniors to use in case of an emergency at a nursing home. I need my book formatted for KDP. I want my book formatted in a size that is easy for seniors to carry. I need your expertise on this one. Size book down to the size KDP will allow me to sell. A small book is best. I received your info from Sean Dwell. Okay, so that's the message. November 28th. I sent to Abdul Aliyam. So Abdul Aliyam responds back November 28th with this message. Okay, let's bring it down here and let's see what he says. Okay. Okay, so after contacting Abdul Aliyam with the email, this is what he messaged back. Hello, thanks for your text. Let me catch you soon. Then he says, and you can show here, I reported these. Sorry, it was 3 a.m. when you knocked me. Can I get the file so I can check and let you know? Remember, he's requesting the file, no contract. You don't know what the fees are going to be, the charges. And was this appropriate within Fiverr? We don't know, but we do have a clear understanding where this actually went. Okay, so the next conversation is me. Think of your grandparents or even your parents who need to access this information. Very easy. I specialize in protecting senior citizens. I created this reference guide because a friend 
from high school told me his mother was being abused in a nursing home. So this is the story that I gave Abdul Aliyam to kind of, because you need to give them kind of an idea, sort of, of an idea of what you're doing. And this was his response back. Hi, what's the trim size you're looking for? 5'8 is a size you can try. Also, you can make custom sizes like 4'6. So, we're interacting November 30th after contacting him November 28th. And it gives the appearance that, hey, everything is a go. And this is going to turn out great. Okay, let's go a little further here. And let's see. Tell me, can I sell 4x6 on Amazon is what I asked him. And he says November 30th. Remember, this is still November 30th. Let's play it safe and go with 5A because of printing costs also. And that was me. And he comes back and he says, Remember, we don't know. We're testing the security of Fiverr.com and this is what we found out. Yeah, KDP allows custom sizes now. It would be better if you see 5x8 is okay. If not, then we can go for 4x6. This is Aliyam the whole time interacting as if he's conducting the business at hand. Again, still November 30th. If you want more handy one, and then I put, okay, four by six. What does he say? Okay, I'm on it. November 30th, 7.30 in the evening. He's on it. So we're under the impression that he is getting ready to start formatting the book. But we find out it's not so. The reason is we had not heard from him for a week after November 30th. Then December 7th, I asked, when do you think the editing will be completed? This is December 7th. One week after contacting him, also we did not get a response December 7th. We responded again with December 8th. How much do I owe you so far for this formatting? We never discuss a price or a timeline time or com for completing, and I'm becoming very concerned. So I'm notifying him eight days later, later we have not heard from you, and I am concerned. This was his response to this. Let's go up a little more. And this is from Ali M, December 8th. I'm replying from my phone. You owe me nothing so far as I didn't start the project or aren't in a contract. Did you hear again? I'm replying from my phone. You owe me nothing so far as I didn't start the project or aren't in a contract. I am far from my workplace. My father is in the hospital for a week. He got a surgery and not well so far. It was a sudden decision and I didn't have any time to text you about my position. Now, this is where we started to express a real concern to him. And this is what I said. I'm sorry for your father. I hope he gets better. We will cancel the deal. I have a cover designer who has been waiting for a week. What about my material I sent to you? What does he say? Don't worry about the material. I'm a professional and your material will be safe. I value your time and I apologize for my action. I may be back to work after the next four to five days. This is what I want you to understand. You put the money on the table, which is your intellectual property. You send it to an individual who said, send it to me.
Someone who's been operating in Fiverr since 2019. He did not say send it within a contract. He did not say let's do an estimate. He says send it to me. You didn't hear from him for a week. And the next thing you find out his father had surgery. And I'm not able to do anything for you. But yet I have your intellectual property that has never been published before. And don't you worry. I'm a professional. It's safe with me. Really? It's okay. Don't you worry about that money. Let's get back into this email. And I'll show you what I found out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I sent him. Remember, this is still December 8th. Okay, what about my material? I'm a licensed security in the state of California. I've gone over 4, 14,000 locations dealing with behavior I call questionable. This is questionable behavior in my industry. Maybe yours is different, but your word wouldn't have been spoken unless I contacted you. So my material is a concern. Remember, I deal with this all day. Folks, I deal with this all day. I've been in security since 1999. I've gone to 14,000 places doing security alarms, and I've seen it all. And I've I performed as a foot patrol doing a security guard work for over seven years. So I've seen it all. And I can guarantee you, this is a thief. This is a scammer who was recommended by Sean Dwell and also is posted front page on Fiverr.com. This is a real concern because now the money's gone. It's gone. And most thieves that I have run into in the industry always give you a story. Oh, my dad, my mama, oh, man, I'm sorry this happened. Something that I have learned also from my experience. Church people do not hang out with thugs. Church people will never refer you to a thief. They will only refer you, oh, brother such and such, yeah, he works on cars. Oh, sister such, yeah, she cooks, she'll do that for you. So you'll never have a church person refer you to a thief. Thieves hang out together. Criminals hang out together. And church people hang out together. This is why in the United States we have what's called the Racketeering and Extortion Act. It's called the RICO Act. The reason is people like Al Capone would get out of prison and when the police pull up on Al Capone, they notice that everybody's hanging around you has gotten out of prison. And this is why they created the RICO Act. Thugs or convicted felons cannot be around each other. So if I refer you to a thief, it's not hard to realize my character isn't too far from the individual that I referred you to. Keep that in mind as we continue to move on. Remember who referred us to this thief. Remember who posted this thief on their front page website. Can we trust the sources that recommended this thief to us? Let's get back into the email so I'll let you know what's going on here. Did you get that? You ever think about telling that maybe to Dr. Dre or Snoop Dogg? You're the one editing their rap song, and you tell Dr. Dre, look, dog, I'm not able to work on it, man. There's nothing I can do. But don't you worry. The number one hit that you just created is safe with me because I'm a professional. I give you my word. Really? Immediately, you notice one thing. You requested the file to be transferred to you without a contract. Then, you ghost on the individual for a week. It takes the individual to contact you, and then all of a sudden, you're now a victim? You're now someone who you're saying, well, you know, we really don't have a contract, and even though I have your file, I'm a professional. I'm not going to do anything with it. Who's that stupid? You're able to take the file, give it to someone else, they can remaster it, and the book is probably already printed. 
this is why we're saying Fiverr.com is not safe for editing any type of intellectual property because Fiverr does not have a way of protecting you. Fiverr needs to have their own cloud where your knowledge and information is sent into this cloud. These freelancers can only access the cloud and work on your material. They cannot download from the cloud. They cannot copy from the cloud. You have access to this information in the cloud and you can delete it at any time you want. That is security and that is what's safe. This type of method here has set up maybe millions for being ripped off. We don't know how many people this guy has schemed and scammed. If you've been schemed or scammed in Fiverr or by Abdul Aliyam, notify me. We would like to know how many people have had this problem in Fiverr. You will find videos that talk about sellers becoming victims of buyers but you don't find any information that warns a buyer beware fiverr.com when you're transferring intellectual property the individual who scammed us who actually failed the security test has five stars promoted by a millionaire Sean Dwell and is on the front page of Fiverr, advertising as a formatting, book formatting and whatever else. But the problem is, this is a thief. Let's get back into this so I can show you a little more information that will really start to make you cringe. All right, we're back on December 8th. We've never left this date. We're still with the conversation. And this is what I said. This is my first experience with Fiverr. Recommended by Sean. Remember, Sean Dwell recommended this guy. I didn't know I was supposed to get a contract first to protect my work. I just wanted you to know Sean and Fiverr will know about my concerns. I'm very concerned about my information. Then Abdul Ali M responds, yes, Sean recommended me. I do work for him for a long time and I also do formatting books for well from different clients. It is a regular job for me unless you know everyone can be in trouble anytime. And that's what I'm in. Even if I can work on this project, then the information is still here, right? I respect your concern, but this is my profession, my job is just to do formatting. Nothing else matters. I don't even read the content. If I don't need to, your files are 100% protected. I won't even look at the file again. I won't even look at it again, the file. Really? Well, let's continue here and let's see what else he has to say. And this is what I let him know. I'll am, December 8th. It's nothing to do with Sean. Sean recommended me as a professional who does the kind of job. Everything else is on me. And here I got a family situation and it was unexpected for me. What I can do is assure you that I'll never download the file and I'll delete the file from my computer when I'm when I'll be back from the hospital. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is something that we had realized when we conducted this security test. Once the individual has your intellectual property, there's nothing you can do. So what we decided to do was Let's backtrack a little bit and see maybe this guy might have good character and maybe his father is having a situation where he's not able to continue the work. The only concern as a security professional is this. If it's right, it's right. And if it's wrong, it is wrong. And something I notice here, you did not, you never notified us about your situation we had to notify you. And your situation happened just after 
you got the money. Interesting. Once you pass intellectual property to someone where only you and that individual has seen, that person can ghost on you, remaster it, and sell it. Person's word of mouth is nothing here. In security, we watch your actions. We always watch your hands. We watch your movements. We can listen to what the words you say. But our most concern is your actions. So if you take the money and it disappears, and the next thing you say is, I'm a professional. I had an emergency. I couldn't do it. Uh, don't you worry. I'm going to delete it. We know that we're working with a scammer here, a thief. So let's get back into this and let us show you how we toned it down to relieve our scammer here so he would feel good about having the hook set in his mouth. Remember, folks, Hot Rod Shoulders loves to go fishing. And you do not want to get these hooks caught in your mouth. Let's get back to the email. Okay, folks, this is December 9th, and we're backtracking because we realize he's got your intellectual property and there's nothing you can do. And we want to give this guy a second chance. Maybe there is a real problem, and maybe he'll change his ways. But this is what we said. I overreacted yesterday. I have a good friend here in the United States who is from your area. He assured me you're an honest person and one who is trustworthy. I have nothing to worry about. I was acting impatient. I asked, would you accept my apology? When you get back to the office, continue the work as planned. I never said one bad thing to anyone about your name. So don't worry, your father's name is Honorable and you're an Honorable Son. Thank you. Okay, folks, so we backtracked a little. We gave him some BS to make him think, oh, you know, don't worry, guy. You know, we trust you and everything. But as a security professional, no, I don't trust you. I notified him December 8th. I didn't trust him. His behavior was questionable. But he still continued to give us these excuses. But remember one thing he said that should really make your skin crawl. And what he said was, I don't have a contract with you. I don't have a contract with you. Why did he request intellectual property and then backtrack and says, we don't have a contract? You've got the files, right? You still holding that money? You going to delete the money? You going to burn it? You're going to destroy the money? Who's that stupid? Nobody's that stupid. Let's get back into this email here. And let's find out what's going on. Well, after telling Abdul Aliyam that, hey, we were sorry, you know, blah, 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 giving him some BS, this is what he says. No, and this is December 9th. No problem, man. Thanks to you. I respect your concern from the very first moment. I'm in a bad time now, so things are getting good and bad at the same time. Remember, he has intellectual property. So December, we don't hear any more from Aliyam after December 9th. So December 15th, we decide to interact with him again. Let's enter into a contract now. It's been about two weeks now, and I was reading on Fiverr that it helps the customer to know a timeline and price. What is his response? The same old excuse. I'm not yet back man my father is still in same condition we're going abroad to get better treatment I had to pause my gig for that okay folks our question is how many people did he scam in December with this same story how much intellectual property is he sitting on right now and people are waiting for results. Once you've transferred your intellectual property to Aliyam, 
you're not getting it back and it's not being destroyed in India is where we have a lot of scammers here in the United States and in Europe we get hit day after day with scammers from India where is Ali M from he's from India what does he tell us do send me the file I'll take care of it the soon as he gets the money you know father had an emergency man what about that money I'm gonna destroy it I'm gonna delete it man don't you worry I'm a professional do you know anyone who will take millions of dollars and destroy it and what I'm getting at is the books that we send the knowledge that they have can be worth millions Dr. Dre's beat millions I have a dream speech worth millions Rolling Stones songs worth millions billions all it takes is for a scammer inside Fiverr to take your intellectual property remaster it and go out and sell it there's nothing you can do and you have no protections in Fiverr other than their word of mouth, other than their form, other than these are our policies. But they will tell you, we have no laws that govern this. And that's something you have to be concerned about. Let's continue this speech here, and let me tell you what the result ended up being. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back into this. I'm not back. I'm not yet back, ma'am. My father's still in the same condition. We're going abroad to get better treatment. I had to pause my gig for a while. Then he refers me December 17th. Can you please?